chances are you have some pretty strong feelings about Dallas. And a position that that will particularly be true for is quarterback. 2022's MVP award winner, Dak Prescott, also ranks 17th in PFF grade and 4th in adjusted expected points added per play. Do I think he's as good as any of those numbers suggest? I don't think so. I think the positives can be a bit too positive because I don't think he's the 4th best quarterback in the NFL. But I think they can also be a bit negative as I don't think he's as bad as the 17th quarterback either. And his numbers don't look good, but they can be a bit misleading because what particularly stands out is his high interceptions. And in reality, I think that's more to do with bad luck than it is bad placement as he's about average in PFF's turnover-worthy play percentage. So I think that has more to do with receivers dropping balls into interceptions or just other misfortune in the end i think he's in that kirk cousins Derek carr ryan Tannehill cluster where they're very above average but they're not very distinguishable from one another so at quarterback i give them a b moving to their weapons cd lamb is a bona fide number one receiver and they really have a nice pairing of him with Michael Gallup who is a very solid number two when healthy but so far I think he's looked a bit like he's not at 100% at tight end they have one of about 75 of the NFL's solid tight ends so Schultz is an above average tight end but I wouldn't say he's special What is special though is their running back duo as it's arguably the best in the entire NFL I would put them behind Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, but you could have that discussion for sure. In the end, PFF ranks them as 11th in receiver grade, and I think that's about where I would put them, so I give them a B for weapons. Shifting to the offensive line, Tyron Smith is not playing at 100%, but I would still take him for what he is over Terrence Steele. And that bodes nicely for them as it gives them a trio of the quote-unquote Smith brothers as Tyler Smith has been an awesome pickup for them in the first round at their left tackle spot. And Zach Martin is just a perennial all-pro caliber player. So they're good on the tackle spots as far as I'm concerned because I think Tyron Smith will be getting healthy as the year goes on. And they're pretty good in the interior as well as Zach Martin's great. The closest to a weakness that they have is Connor McGovern, their left guard. But if he's your biggest weakness, that's not too big of an issue. Pro Football Focus has ranked them 17th in pass protection and 11th in run blocking. So they've been solid to this point. But I expect that to improve with time as, again, they become healthier with time. So I give them an A for offensive line. As we shift on to the defensive side of things, if you could, please like and subscribe as it'll let me know that this content is appreciated and make a huge difference in the YouTube algorithm. Moving back to the Cowboys, for their defensive line, they may have the filthiest edge group in the entire NFL as... Micah Parsons, I think, is at his best as an edge rusher. And then you have Demarcus Lawrence, who's also a star. You have Dante Fowler, who's a great pass rusher. And Sam Williams, as well, has been a nice rotational piece on the edge. For the interior, they're not quite as inspirational as Carlos Watkins and Osa Adigazua are just okay players. But... Really, they're good enough to play the first and second down and then let their star edges shine on third down when they can move Demarcus Lawrence inside, which is kind of an ode to the Giants of the 2010s where you could do the NASCAR formation of having three to four defensive ends on the field at one time which just becomes such an absolute headache to block in the pass game that being a little bit limited in the run game is more than all right. And speaking of being limited in the run game, Pro Football Focus ranks them as 22nd in run defense, but 2nd in pass rush, 
which I do think they do have a slight weakness in the run game just because power running teams can expose the limits they have on the interior. But with that said, I still give them a very strong A that you could argue is an A+. Looking at their linebackers, I would prefer Damone Clark and Leighton Vander Esch when he is healthy to be their duo. I think Anthony Barr is nice to have on third downs as he can be a blitz or cover guy, which adds to the sort of chess match, even if you're not going to blitz him a whole lot. It's still nice to have that threat. But in all, I don't think they're that inspiring. I give them a B because I think they're above average, but not super definitively so. Shifting to their defensive backs, they have one of the most underrated and just best young corners in the NFL, in addition to Trayvon Diggs, because the guy I'm talking about is Deron Bland, who has just been another success story for them as a rookie. He's great as a coverage guy on the outside and in the slot, which is honestly pretty rare to see. So he's a really, really solid corner. In addition to Bland, they obviously have Trayvon Diggs, who is still a plus player in my mind, even though the interceptions haven't been there like last year. They also have some very good safeties in Javon Curse and Donovan Wilson. And it's interesting how they work together, because Dan Campbell runs a lot of cover three from his Seattle days still. And he has a 6'4 free safety and a six foot tall strong safety, which is kind of reversed from what what you would expect as in Seattle, Cam Chancellor was a strong safety that was six three. As for their weakness, that would be Nishan Wright, who is in for the injured Anthony Brown. And Anthony Brown wasn't a superstar, but he was another above average corner, which is great to have in a weak link system like the secondary. But Nashawn Wright kind of brings the unit down a bit as he is more of a rotational guy than a full-fledged starter, and he's been forced to be thrusted in to the starting role. For their grade, I end up giving them a B, and part of that is a cop-out as... I was split between an A and an A plus for their defensive line, and I don't want to give them the short end of the stick consecutively, where I was torn between a C and a B here, but I think you could argue on their own merit their B, because they have two good corners and two good safeties. They're coached very well by Dan Campbell, who has really revitalized his career after a poor performance as a head coach. So they play as well as they possibly can, even if the talent isn't truly elite. Lastly, for their coaching, they're not in a great realm because what we can track that relates to success for coaches is first down running for one, which is going to be the worst time to run as it's when the defense is most expecting and selling out to stop the run. According to Ben Baldwin, they are sixth in doing it most frequently out of any team. And also, according to Ben Baldwin, they are in the scared tier of fourth down decision making, which doesn't make a lot of sense considering their personnel as they have a good talented offense and like him or not Prescott is a pretty aggressive quarterback that you can kind of trust to make a play on fourth down even if it's not going to be the prettiest you can expect him to run for a short yard or you can expect him to at least throw it up to give his guy a chance to convert a fourth down Even if they didn't get it, they also have a good defense that can bail them out from a poor starting point. I like both of their assistant coordinators, but I think that only means so much as there is a fear that they will enter a game unprepared or be undisciplined as the game goes on, and that's sort of 
falls more on the head coaches than it does the coordinators. But the coordinators do save this from being a poor group as Dan Campbell in particular just really gets the most out of his guys and seems to give you such a nice floor for their defense. In the end, I give them a C, but really it could be a bit lower than that if not for a good group of coordinators. In the comments section, I'll have listed their grade relative to everyone else. They have an 81.5 out of 100, which means they are a solid team, but I think they're a little bit off from being a true contending team just because they don't have that real consistent strength across the team. They are good at multiple positions, and I think they're on their way to improving at some of their weaker ones, such as wide receiver with the addition of T.Y. Hilton. But it's hard to put a lot of trust in things we don't know, especially this late in the year. So they're a good team, but I don't know if they're actually elite. And just for context, too, I would say they're about the sixth best team in the NFL with a slight tier gap between them and the top five. If you've made it this far in the video, please be sure to like and subscribe and let me know what you think of the evaluation. Thank you for watching.